Well, take your Bible, turn to Ezekiel 28. Let's start out there. We're talking about the beguiled serpent. You turn to Ezekiel 28, I'll turn to... Uh, Second Corinthians, that's our source text. <clears throat> Paul said in Second Corinthians eleven through three, I fear us by any means as a serpent be God through subtlety. So your mind should be corrupted. And the key word there for uh, this morning, we started that last morning, last Sunday morning. Your mind should be corrupted in the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that come, come preacheth another Jesus, and we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel, which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. So in Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 14, is where we're going to start. Uh, the Lord, the anointed cherub that covereth, this is the description of Lucifer, the fallen angel. He was before his fall, according to the Bible, an anointed cherub. Cherub is a type of angel. Cherub, according to first, excuse me, first Ezekiel. Ezekiel, chapter one, the first Ezekiel, uh, chapter one. Cherubs have like a. Um, What's the word I'm looking for? They seem to be a conglomeration of creatures. In Ezekiel 1, the cherubs that support the throne of God have faces. Oh, man, I don't like that sound. Hang on a second. Hold on. One, uno, momento, por favor. my Spanish. Probably leftovers from Wednesday night. Boy, I mean, it got rough here Wednesday night. Man, if we were here, it was rough. So anyway, but uh, they have a, just sort of a, a mixture of appearances. The the four chairs, they have the face of a man. They have four faces. Face of a man, uh, face of an ox, face of an eagle, face of a lion. And uh, those, those four were spent in the Ark of the Covenant, the throne of God. And uh, the earthly picture of that is four Levi priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant on their shoulders. So it's the same, same picture that you get down on earth as what's in heaven. And we know that Lucifer, we know that he is a serpent. We know that he is referred to as a dragon. We also know that he, has, he is referred to as the fire flying serpent. And, uh, but he has been brought down down to the position of, 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 of being low, the lowest of, of all creatures. Apparently, God took away his legs. Every other creature that we see on the earth has had legs, even some of the reptiles, lizards and dragons and whatnot. But, but God removed those from him and made him the lowest. He crawls around on his belly, licking the dust. And if you've ever watched... A snake move around. That is precisely what they do. Now, how did 5,000-year-old desert dwellers know that? How did those men writing the Bible know that a serpent, even though his tongue may have never touched the ground, what does a serpent do with his tongue when it pokes it out? He used that for smell. He, he, is, he is testing the air and pulling in small, minute particulates that are floating around in the air. And his tongue goes out, samples that, draws it back in, and, and he gets a sense of what's around him. He's literally licking the dust. Literally. Okay? How did these old timers know that? God told them. God said, write this down. Okay? That's exactly what happened. So anyway, so he is a cherub, the anointed cherub of the heaven, and I set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God, thou walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy way from the day that thou was created, till iniquity was found in thee. 
By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee out as profane out of the mountain of God. God lost his position because of pride. It can happen to anybody. Say amen. Okay? Lost his position. Cast him out profane, and I will destroy thee. They will cover cherub from the midst of the stone of fire. Thine heart is lit up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted. Here it is right here. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by, by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Now, uh, we're going to study just for a little while today, or maybe a long while, depending on how long I take. Turn to Daniel chapter 2. We're going to study how... The devil corrupts, or this issue of corruption. As you well know, I no longer believe what I used to believe. I was taught that the Bible, as it is translated, had error in it and mistakes in it. Those mistakes not only occurred in the tra translation of the Bible, but those errors and mistakes were also in the Greek and Hebrew manuscripts. I no longer believe that. I cannot believe it. The Bible does not allow me to believe that. Okay? That's something that every Christian has to deal with at some point in their life is, do you really believe what the Bible says? Do you believe it? Do you believe how it says it? And sometimes our mind wants to tell us one thing, the Bible tells us another, and you just learn to reconcile, you just learn to say God is true and every man's a liar, this Bible's right. And I'm just going to believe what it says. And God's going to be mad at me about something. He's definitely not going to be mad at me for not believing what he said. Amen. Be mad at me for a lot of other things. It probably is. And will be. Okay. But at least I'll believe what he said. All right. So the devil corrupts. Now, uh, Daniel chapter 2 verse 9 is the source here. But I want to kind of get the context of it. Let's read the verse. This is heavy. Can you talk? And he said, but if you will not make known unto me the dream... There is but one decree for you. For you have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me. Now, I have outlined up here, up, up, I have it up on the screen, lying and corrupt words. Word, word. You will notice as you read your King James Bible that often Bible, the writer of the Bible will place two words uh, joined together by a conjunction of the word and. In a sentence. That, what is that, Ryan? God's dictionary. God's defining the word for you. He's telling you in this context what it means. Okay? In this case, they prepared corrupt words, and those words were deliberately corrupted. They were there to lie. Now, let me let me read the verse and I'll explain it to you. For you have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me till the time be changed. Therefore, tell me the dream. And I will, I, I will know that you can show me the interpretation thereof. Now, the context is, Nebuchadnezzar has taken, he's gone, God wanted to do, went into Jerusalem. And he took out all the Jews, all the knights, and took them into captivity. He's got them as slaves, he's got them as servants. He got... Uh, some of them working in his palace, the smartest ones. We know he has Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He has them there. And he goes to bed one night and he has a dream. And when he wakes, and the dream is very intense. And when he wakes up, he cannot remember the dream. How many of y'all have done that? I've written some of the most amazing music. And not remembered. The moment I wake up, I'm going, that was beautiful. What was it? I have no idea. I can't remember a note of it, Sterling. Okay? You should have heard it. It was good. Okay? But anyway, uh, this thing's escaped. And so he, the dream has escaped. Him. So he calls in, and I have that up on the screen. The Bible says magicians, sorcerers, astrologers, and Chaldeans. One, two, three, four. The Bible numbers these for a reason telling you this number four relates always to four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So the, the context, the idea here is the devil will have a replacement of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. 
what's in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The life of Jesus Christ, his sacrificial death, his atonement for sins, and his, uh, his burial, and then his resurrection from the dead, giving, giving life to all mankind, all right? To those who believe. That's what's in there. The devil will always have, and what we're studying is, he has a replacement gospel. In fact, he's got thousands of them. We passed a car yesterday. I, uh, I have a, I, I want to give you a restaurant recommendation. Don't go. <laughs> hey, we went to a, I will just say, a brand new restaurant opening up last night in downtown Crystal City, Missouri, Missouri, that I would not go to again. I will not go there again. Maybe it was their first night. It was a rough night. They didn't have what we ordered. They ran out to get it, and what we got was not good. That being said, in the parking lot, Caleb, what did we see in the parking lot? Back glass, it had 666, and then it had Nielsen. And on the bumper, it had, it had uh, in Satan we tr I trust, and it had a pentagram drawn on the back, on the trunk cover. Have you run into this guy? Okay. Sitting right there where Bimler Chevrolet used to be. I just, just gave it away, but anyway. Okay. Um, yeah, I sit, sitting right there. I took a picture of it. And I'm just going... This, who this is, he may even be doing this for a joke, but it's not funny. I wouldn't do it for a joke. Okay? He's got this on his car. It's obviously, it is obvious who he is. He has been, he has been deceived. That is just one of the deceptions. That's just one. There are thousands of them. Anything to draw him, his children, his circle of influence, anything can draw them away from the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay? I, I mean, I can just almost tell you who this guy, I mean, he, he, I can tell you, I almost tell you what music he listens to, what he reads, what he does. I mean, everything about this guy in this little profile of what he's blazoned on his vehicle. Okay, and you say you, you don't judge people? Are you kidding me? I'm not the smartest guy in the world when it comes to knowing what a tree is unless I see an orange on it. I know what the color orange is. Okay, and I know an orange tree when I see an orange on it. They're fruit, you shall know them. That's just one of the many, many, many corrupt Gospels. So, Nebuchadnezzar draws these four groups of guys in because they are his chief advisors. The religious men, listen to me now, the religious men always counsel the political men. Always. Okay? You, re -re you study the Bible. Every king in the Bible had counselors, had people that aided and assisted them in making decisions. The story of the book of Esther was about a king who did not make two critical decisions on his own. He made them by way of counsel. That's very, ladies, that's very important to remember. If your husband's still around, you, you have a greater role than you think you do. Or maybe you have overstepped your role but your role is to not run the show. Your role is the help, the advisor, the counselor. A good husband will listen to that. Doesn't does, 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 does everything she says. He'll listen to it. Okay, husbands of your wives is not bitter against them, the Bible says. So anyway, he's got he's got four groups of counselors, and they're all religious men. 
and he's had this dream, and he is counting on them. They're astrologers, sorcerers, magicians, stuff they do to try to draw down from the spirits, the gods, what this dream was. Because he knew it had spiritual context. He knew it did. So he says to them, I had a dream last night. I don't know what it was. Here's what I need you to do. Tell me the dream, and then let me know the interpretation of it. And then they said, oh, king, we're your guys. Tell us what you dreamt, and we'll tell you what it would mean. And then Nebuchadnezzar said, I was born at night, but it was last night. And you look, you look at your Bible. He's wise. He says to these guys, if you make known unto me the dream, if you're really who you say you are, you tell me what I dream. Because if you don't, I, I know it. And I will know that you have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me. I know it. Nebuchadnezzar does not want to be lied to on this thing. This thing is troubling him. It's it getting him. And he needs help. So he just says to him, you don't tell me the truth, I'll know it. I'll know it in my spirit. I'll know that that in the dream. Okay? And they, they pleaded with him, please, please, you just, just help them. No, nobody's ever done that. That's, that's impossible. Not God, amen. God, listen, God did that. You remember the story of Pharaoh and Joseph? Pharaoh couldn't remember the dream either. And he had two of them, and he couldn't remember either one of them. And Joseph, they pulled him up in prison and said, I'll tell you what it was. And he told, told exactly what it was twice, and Pharaoh knew it. And the same thing is going on here. Now watch this. Watch the turnaround. Since the magicians, sorcerers, astrologers, and Chaldeans can't do it, get ready for my finger puppets. The king sends out a decree and says, I'm going to kill every one of my counselors if, you can't, if nobody can tell me this dream. Daniel hears about it. He, he's Daniel, goes to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And says, boys, we're, we're cupcakes tomorrow morning. We're finished. We're through with it. over with. If we don't come up with this dream, let's, see it. let's all us guys go and pray and ask God to bear our lives. And four men went before God and God gave them. See, see the battle that's going on here? You got four on this side that, that Nebuchadnezzar said, they're preparing lying and corrupt words from me. Then you got four on this side that says, we'll give it directly to you. From God to you. And Daniel told Nebuchadnezzar the dream. Nebuchadnezzar knew it. And he wanted to honor him. And Daniel said, listen to me, king. This thing wasn't given to me for any greatness that I am. But God wanted you to know this dream. It was God. He gave glory to God. Amen? That's what we ought to be doing. God does something good in your life. God fills you with wisdom. You just bow your head and start bawling your eyes out and say, God, why, why, you, why you show me good things like this? God, why do you feed me? God, why do you put up with me? Amen. Amen. Lying and corrupt words. So you get the, the battle that's, that always is always going on for your soul and in my mind. And the mind of your family and the mind of your friends and the mind of this country and everybody that you know, there's going to be lying words on this side, corrupt words on this side, and, and there's the truth on this side, and there's always a battle going on between them. Who's, who's going to tell the truth? Okay. You want me to put it on a cellular level? You want me to get down to your very genetic structure? And they start, and we're in the age now. We're in the age, I sit Thursday, we're officially in the age of corruption. China. Changing. Four base pair combination of DNA of human embryos altering human beings at their genetic level from the, from the smallest age possible. And the thing about this, Wayne, is, watch this now. You think God don't know what's going on? The thing is, once the genetic alteration takes place, not only is it irreversible, but then whoever lives with that alteration in it, it's permanent and they pass it down to the next generation. It becomes a new germline on this earth that has never been seen before. 
We're releasing mosquitoes out everywhere that they've genetically modified. And that genetic moderation or modification is permanent. And they don't have a clue what they're doing. Playing God. Good grief. You see, you see the danger. Listen, I've, my back hurt me. I've had surgery Tuesday. If, they showed up, if the surgery fails and they showed up and they said, well, that, that didn't work. However, we have a genetic modification. Boy, have we got a mod for you, buddy. You can eat it. I ain't having it. Turn to Malachi. Look at that. Whoosh. Malachi chapter 2. Believe it or not, there is a story in the family of Michael and Lisa Hoggard that has to do with dung on their face. No, I want to you, Matthew. One of our babies got out of their diaper early on Sunday morning. It was bad. It was very bad. Nobody wants... You should have seen the first diaper I ever changed. I heard that, John. Lee will tell you, I shoved Kleenex up my nose. Oh, it was awful. I was mad because it was going, this ain't a man to work. And she said, it's your daughter. Malachi chapter 2, verse 3. Behold, I will corrupt your seed. Now ponder that for a minute. God, God's angry. Israel. God spent a lot of time being angry at Israel. God now spends a lot of time being angry at churches. God says, I will corrupt your seed. Think about it. Number one, genetically modified food. Genetically modified food is a corruption of seed unknown to planet earth. We don't know what it does yet. We don't know what ramifications 10 years, 20 years, 100 years down the road that these scientists are doing. We, we, we don't get it. We don't know it. Number two, corrupt Bibles. The seed, according to Matthew 13, Luke chapter 4, the seed is the word of God. God said, do you, what, do, does it now make sense, Todd, why there are so many churches with phony Bibles in them? They turned a long time ago away from the word, and God then corrupted their seed, Wayne. God did that. God allowed the corruption to creep in. God allowed Satan to slip in and corrupt that seed so that you do not have three that bear record of heaven, the Father, the Lord, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. You do not have the Son of God in the, fire, the fourth, the fiery river. You do not have the Son of God there. You have a Son of the Gods in there, but you do not have the Son of God. The Kenyan recognized this. When I showed it to in their Bible, wept over this. They were mad. They were angry. They were, I'm just glad they were not angry at me. I, I was like 5,000 miles from home or more. Okay? But they, they were angry that the corrupter had corrupted the seed of the Word of God. And when I showed it to them, it, it, they wept. I couldn't believe what I was seeing in this room of people who love the Lord and love the Word of God, the pastors who were eager to hear the truth of the Word of God. And when they saw it, it made sense to them, and they said, somebody's corrupted our Bibles. We're not going to use this anymore. We're going to use King James here. Because they all spoke English. They just didn't speak my English. Arkansas, Missouri, redneck brand of English. They didn't speak it. Uh, number three, when he said, I will corrupt your seed, literally. Now it makes sense. Now we know. 
that it's possible to corrupt the very genetics of mankind so that in his loins he carries genetic material that did not come from his forefathers, was not handed down to him from Adam himself. It was built by man. Because the article that I read this week, here before, they've just been copying DNA. There are laboratories all over the world. There's a ton of them in America that store genetic material for research. And you can buy copies of original genetic material if you're a laboratory and you're doing this kind of research. So what they wanted to do was, instead of, and it makes sense, it's like the system of they, they don't they have to pay royalties to Zonervan Publishing every time they use the NIV Bible in their Sunday school literature. So they decided to save a ton of money, write their own translation of the Bible, the whole Christian standard. That way, when they published verses, it was their own Bible, they didn't owe any money to anybody. People had to pay money to use the whole standard Bible. So the same thing. The scientists then took the DNA from yeast. And there's like a thousand different breeds of yeast. They picked one and they decided rather than just copying it, we're going to build it by hand. And they succeeded in doing it. And it worked. It lived. That's dangerous. That's like God. That's the power of a God to take things and put it together and make it live. With the exception of court where God said, uh, excuse me, I'm the one who invented the four piece pairs, adding one, 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 So they didn't really create it. They just did it on their own. But they were able with their own hand, their own manipulation, to, to put the proper strings of code together to make a living creature. So now, what stops scientists instead of knowing how yeast is made and knowing how to put it together by hand, what stops them from making a brand new creature? Who says that? I've seen monster movies. I just watched one this weekend called Life. It's a new movie that came out where they supposedly found life on Mars. And it's like this monster. And it fell to the earth. It's going to take over the earth. I'm going, ah, I didn't want it to end that way. Okay? And I'm, yeah, and it's the... They, they can create, watch this, now, I want you to listen to the words I'm using. They can build a new creature on this planet that has never been seen before. That's in your Bible. What God does with us is make a new creature out of us. A new creation. Amen? From what? From four things. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The devil then takes that and he corrupts it. And, and so what is going to stop science from modifying your family members and your friends, turning them into things that God never intended for us to be? It's not science fiction anymore. We're doing it. We're in the age of it right now. Behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread dung upon your face, even the dung of the solemn feet, and one shall take you away with it. You're on. Turn to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Verse 16. Jesus said, You shall know them by the roots. Amen. So if I see a car that's laced with 666, hail Satan, in Satan I trust, pentagrams everywhere, I know he's not an independent Baptist. 
or a King James Bible reader. Amen. They don't want you to judge. Now don't judge me. But this is who I am. Then you shall know by the fruit. Do men. Now listen to this. Listen to the reason. You're the wisest man to ever walk face of the earth. And it wasn't Solomon. It was Jesus Christ. Do men gather their grapes of thorns? John. Do you gather grapes out of thorns? No, he says. And he works in a vineyard. He, I think he keeps a know. We used to run through the woods and run into them some sticker bushes, we called them. Hated to do those things. Because you're running 90 miles an hour and zoom, you're in the midst of a big thorn thicket. And then you don't run 90 miles an hour anymore. You just, just really slow. Pulling it out of britches legs. Get, get stuck. Okay? And then he said, or there could be figs out of thistles. No. Even so, every good tree bringing forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth the good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is soon down, cast in the fire. Wherefore, their fruits ye shall know them. It's not judging someone, it's knowing them. It's knowing them. Knowing their fruits. Let me ask you a question, okay? All of, somebody give me somebody famous in Hollywood or music that has died. Michael Jackson, Bible believing Christian or not? How do you know? Their fruits. Johnny Cash said that he saved before he died. Uh, I do know that. Um, um, what's her name? Vestal Goodman, of the Happy Goodmans, was friends with. George Jones went and visited him before he died and led him to the Lord. See, I like stuff like that, amen? I don't have a problem with that. I do not have a problem with that whatsoever. But when Hollywood and Nashville and Motown starts making Christians out of people, yeah, ring, saved by the bell. Justin Bieber, supposedly he's turning back to religion now. No. Yeah, doesn't surprise me. Oh, Hillsong. Okay, that makes sense. That's that's different fruit. Okay, it's thistles and thorns. It's what it is. Now, before we leave out of here, get your shed. Of your thorns. Hang them on the cross. Because that's who took them from you. Can I hear God's people say amen? And then you'll produce good fruit. Then men will gather good fruit. From good trees. That have not been corrupted. And don't let your doctor talk you into genetic modification. Ten years from now. Because it will be part of your insurance package probably. They'd buy and sell. Buying and sell. Congress is going to fit right now over, over health care. They're not going to just turn it back the way it was and let health care industry run it itself. That's not going to happen. I don't think. It surprised me if it did. John McCain walks in and just comes down. I don't know if you saw that. But that was a close vote and sent on this get Obamacare bill, and John McCain was deciding he had cancer. He walks into the floor of the Senate without saying a word, holds his hand up, and everybody watches, and he went thumbs down like that, and they, reg they knew what that meant. They registered his vote as a no, and the whole Democrat Party just jumped up and cheered and shouted and everything. Anyway, I better quit, but, but the idea is controlling health care from the top down, and at some point, I'm telling you, It'll require genetic modification for you to keep getting benefits. Buy and selling. Same thing. The Bible. Okay? 
Father heaven, prepare for days to come. Thank you for this book. Thank you, dear God, for, for not allowing this holy book to see the corruption. Thank you, Lord God, for purifying it. Lord, purify us with it. Purify our motives. Purify our hearts, God. We're very wicked people. We need help from heaven. Lord, help people, dear God, to see good fruit coming out of us from good seed. Thank you, Lord, Father, for your goodness. Thank you for the goodness of these people. We thank you in Jesus' name. All God's people said, Amen.